Minister will try it a different way to sure you. And so to make sure in the say, other instances, Minister, well, you're not interested in answering. So. by 20, I'll say it slower for you, because you're struggling. I get it. Estimates would so say that the doctor here. Perhaps you could tell us. Uh, we tried this uh, questioning before, but how many Canadians don't have a family physician? Well, as I indicated before, it's difficult to get an exact number. Uh, there's between 12 and 14 percent, but uh, but again, it's it's difficult to know with with precision. Just, just the number, perhaps, Minister. How many? Well, as I've indicated before, it's impossible to give an exact number. I'd say in a ballpark range would be between 12 to 14 percent. Yeah. So, so are you telling Canadians out there that you, as the Minister of Health, really have no idea? Uh, what I'm saying is that the health data, which is collected uh, by provinces and territories, is not as clear as it should be. That what we get from provinces and territory leaves some ambiguity, and as a result, we are uh, best left to speculate as to what that number thanks, would be. Thanks and, very much, Minister. Uh, so it's really a six to seven million the, uh, Canadians to without access to primary care. Six to seven million. How many doctors will Canada be short by 2028? This is well, recent it, stuff. I don't know if you've read it, but uh, it's important numbers. You could share that with Canadians. Uh, yeah, and I would say that, you know, if, and I would pause it to you, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going to advance deep cuts to the health system, then that number is going to grow exponentially. Um, it's incredibly important not to allow cuts to occur to our health system. We've signed... Thanks, Minister. Uh, I didn't say anything about cuts. I asked you for a number. How many doctors will we be short in this country by 2028? I'm not going to engage in a hypothetical. I, I think that not that trying to guess what that number might be. I imagine that so you. So once have again, you have no clue. That's no, I, I would say, Mr. Chair, I'm not here to play Jeopardy with you. If so you if you clues. have these questions that where you, you have really an have answer, no idea. like no, because because okay. frankly, it depends 40, upon what happens 40, in the next 000. election, Mr. Chairman. Forty-four thousand. So no, no, but that's what that's your a government has done is, is increase taxes on health care. The capital gains changes it comes into force next week. How many more Canadians will be without a family doctor based on these changes? Having a more fair and balanced tax system uh, uh, where doctors about, still have... I didn't ask you about taxes. I asked you how many more, well, again, and maybe you. you're having trouble hearing, but I'll, I can say it again for you. I'll say it slower. How many Canadians, because of your tax changes, will be without a physician? I would say that the menace to our health system is the cuts that you would propose to it. It is not a more fair and equitable tax system that asks those who make the very most to pay a little bit more so that we can have a safe and secure health system. Just, just, just the number, if you Minister, want the how, many, how many more Canadians will be without a physician because of your tax increases? How many? I reject the premise of that question. I think that what is a menace to our health system is the cuts that you would impose to that system. That a doctor still has huge advantages under our so, tax system. So to as be we able said, Minister, right now, incorporation is a tax deferral. Six vehicle. million Canadians don't have access to primary care. How many more, when you increase taxes, will not have access to a family physician? These the, are not hard questions. Well, they are because they're, because, they're they, because they're not rooted you. in reality. I, I I, look, you, you have some bizarre thing you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. I'm trying to answer <laughs> rooted in reality. Uh, the reality of our health workforce crisis is the investments that we're making to both accelerate foreign credentials so, so and other maybe forms Minister of credentials will try it a and to make sure that and so to make sure in the say, other instances. Minister, well, you're not estimates interested in would answer, say so. by 20. I'll say it slower for you because you're struggling. I get it. Estimates would say that the doctor shortage will be 44,000 by 2028. I not reject that. I future. think the work that we're doing Excuse in me, Minister. I'm, I'm not finished. Just listen. I know it's hard. How much worse will the shortage get when the tax changes take effect? Simple, simple question. I don't. I reject the premise of that question. I don't think it's true or accurate. And I can walk through the tax advantages that continue to remain uh, for doctors, which are very significant, and that the asking for a more a just tax system is not the menace to our health care system. Your cuts, sir, are. Uh, the cuts that you wish to impose upon our health care system are a thank clear you, and present threat much, Minister, to us not being able to ensure that people have the health care work that they need. You know, the Minister, need. the fascinating thing is you keep talking about cuts, but what I keep talking about is the tax changes, the tax hikes that you are promoting for health care. Did your government complete an analysis on the tax hikes before implementing the change? So asking those who are making more than $250,000 from capital gains. No, no, that's, gains, that's not what I asked you. I said, I don't, did but you I don't agree. An I, look, I'm not here to play your bizarre game. I, I'm here to game. try to answer questions rooted in Minister, reality. If you, I, if you me, want to issue a press release with your thoughts, I welcome If you think the Canadians not having a physician is a game, I think then that, you're in, I you're think in the that wrong the, job. 
I think that you the are menace, in the wrong job. I think cutting dental care, cutting pharmacare, cuts so to health care. So I guess the care, question is, Minister, those are the things that are menacing our health care system. Today asking is, for a more you, equitable you, tax. Are you system. really going to just never answer any questions? Is that your plan? But the question really is: Did your government complete an analysis on the tax increases? before you implemented the change? Yes or no? I think the analysis of the tax changes demonstrate very clearly that we're asking those who have made an extraordinary amount of money through capital gains and had an incredible last five years to pay so, a little bit so more Minister, so that a nurse is, isn't paying a higher marginal tax rate Minister, than somebody else. Minister, the question is, did you complete an analysis? Did your government complete analysis on the tax change? Yes or no? And I've, and answered, the, did, I've answered that question. There is absolutely an analysis did, done did, to make sure that this is order? more equitable and more fair. If you fair. did, then please table the it chair. with the committee. I'd love to see it. I have a point chair, of order from Ms. Kaya Bagger. Go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. First, I just want to say that uh, I could barely hear uh, folks in the room. If uh, they could increase the, the sound would be great. My sound is pretty high. Um, I'm calling a point of order because uh, the minister is here to answer questions. Like if he is asking him questions, like give him time to answer questions and not speak over him. It's uh, it's, uh, it's really hard to even hear what they're saying when they're speaking over each other like that. So uh, if he's asking a question, I would say that it would be great for us to hear the answer as well. Thank you, Ms. Kayabaga. What we try to do here is, in, is allow the person answering the question to have as much time to answer it as was spent uh, uh, posing the question. And uh, it's, uh, we've, we've, we've come to learn that that's, that that's exceptionally difficult, but it's also the fairest way that we can do it. So thank you for that. Mr. Doherty, did you have uh, something you want to say on the point of order? Or uh, just uh, only to say, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and to our our, our uh, colleagues that are in there, you're coming through uh, crystal clear uh, on my end. Uh, the both the volume is is loud enough, uh, and uh, and the uh, it's uh, it's very clear. So uh, it might be to Mrs. Kaibaga's, uh question. It might be uh, on her end uh, the issue. It, it could be two people talking at once as well. Okay, Dr. Ellis, you have 25 seconds left for the question and the answer, and you have the floor. Great. Thank you, Chair. So perhaps one final time for you, Minister. I'll say it slow again because you're struggling, I know. But did the government or Health Canada, which is part of the government, complete an analysis on this government-funded, government-implemented capital gains tax hike before implementing the change? And if so, could you table it with the committee, please? Well, insulting me um, isn't going to help ameliorate the answer. The answer is that, yes, we've looked at it, uh, and it was very clear that a nurse shouldn't be paying a higher marginal tax rate um, than, than, uh, than, than a multimillionaire, uh, and that asking folks um, who've done exceptionally well in capital gains over the last number of years to pay a little bit more so that we can have a health, healthy, stable health system, I think makes a good deal of sense. I understand you. your ideological opposition to it, but it, you, personally insulting me doesn't, it doesn't improve your argument. Thank you.